I pressed the blue button. Tim. Tim, we're, we're live. <laughs> ah, we got there. We, we got... Good God. We got there. And Everyone, nobody died. No uh, nobody, died. Almost nobody died. Uh, let's just immediately do this. Uh... Oh. Hello, everyone. Good evening. <laughs> Everything's fine, Tim. We're all right. I mean, it, it didn't help the fact I didn't send you the, the kind of the photographs till about, what, six minutes ago. <laughs> yeah, which means that things may or may not crash horribly when we run through them. I've gone through very quickly to check that everything's sort of because there's a bit of a slight aspect ratio difference between uh, default PowerPoint and what I put out to make sure it's 1920 by 1080. But it's fine. Everything should work. The most important thing happening right now is that Mr. Tim Dunn is opening wine. Uh, I didn't. I was going to get myself a whiskey. In fact, I was going to close the book. Just a sec, everyone. Dina, darling. She'll be listening. To, she'll be watching things already. It's fine. It just means that the the, the recording studio, by which I mean our activity room uh, door, is I mean, open. I've seen your I've, I've seen your recording studio. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's chaos, mean, isn't it, it? It is your back bedroom. Um, it is. But then, so is this really? This is the study, supposedly. <laughs> oh, you're in the study today. Normally, you're in the um, in the living room, aren't you? The previous two, you're in the living room. Yeah, this, this, this is where you normally come and crash out here, it and uh, you know, after drunken late nights out at uh, Red Awards and things. Yeah. No one knows about that. No one knows about that. It's fine. <laughs> uh, yes. Um, and so, everyone, as you can see, Tim Dunn is here. Tim Dunn is Hello. here for the third time. Very, very good friend of the show. Tim is here. Um, in a slight, yeah, very badly we, lit. Oh, it's fine. It's fine. I've I, badly lit. It goes both ways. I've got these two bright lights. In fact, one of them's fallen off the screen, which is quite funny. The blue tack's melted. Uh, I can actually attach that there. Don't worry about that, everyone. It's fine. The blue tack melted without me noticing. It's very Jerry rigged this situation. But I'm being bleached by uh, by too much light. In fact, maybe that's better if I just peel it on the back. Maybe that's better. Anyway, it's fallen off again. It's fine. Very professional outfit here. So, um, everyone, tonight we are talking. Let's go back to the the thing because Tim wants to kind of you know get on with it rather than all this chaos while we kind of let our heart rates descend a little bit we're here to talk about episode well not here to talk about series three of the architecture of the Railways, but really we're here to talk about all three series a bit but maybe focusing on a little bit on the third series because you've had th well as of monday next week there will have been 30 episodes of the architecture of the railways built oh yeah i mean wow um thank you everyone for turning up to this i really appreciate it, it it's, it's nice to have a sort of platform as to have a chat value but i guess i just wanted to recap like where we've come from and, mm. and why we're here and, and how we got this far because I mean, a lot of it's down to you gareth you have helped out massively on the production of this uh, uh in, in a couple of the past series as, as has several of my friends in fact loads of my friends and colleagues and from all over the industry have, have genuinely come together to help make this program um because i think about what so about four years ago i was getting riled about watching telly and just seeing the stuff about rail was was always negative or it was a bit facile and yeah. i say facile that's, that's probably not fair it, 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 it was it was it was not what i would call detailed information that explained things or into the real sort of the, the, the real passion people have for rail and those who work on it you have some observational stuff which is, which is quite interesting but nothing sort of treated it as a, as a you know, a whole network and looked at the whole thing so i thought right no one else has done this so i'm gonna do it so so i, I just thought back to things that i love when i was a kid uh, the, the train now departing you know and it's yes. it, it a lovely program it would, it would just luxuriate in in the designs the buildings and the places and the people that made them happen and their stories and it was just these are people that cared and they love the railway and i know so many people watching this now love the railway but that's why we're here right because we love the railway and we want to make it better and we want to you know see it see it succeed and, and, and find our own ways of doing that um so i thought right let's write this <laughs> so <laughs> yeah uh, so, I, so i posed it to a friend of a friend who a friend who had a friend and she ran a production company and we met at saint pancras uh in, in the booking office we had a nice long lunch and it was great fun and i was very late for my meeting back uh and i that was very naughty of me because we had a drink at lunchtime and um and and, and they changed it around my, my pitch was really about sort of different types of building i thought do you know what we might get three or four programs for documentary mm -hmm. railway buildings who loves them and anyway, it came back they changed the picture slightly it was more sort of like a magazine program that sort of looked at three or four per episode and then they said tim if you had maybe 30 buildings to go and look at 10 20 30 where would you choose so i was like Okay, here's my list. Oh, wait, I've got 400. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> um, and they came back and went uh, a few weeks later. Okay, great. Well, we've um, 
just got commissioned for, for 10 episodes, 10 hours of telly. Are you free in about two months' time? So I've got a full-time job. Uh, and then Trainline, who I, I work for uh, as a travel editor. Uh, at the time, I was I was uh, sort of UK CRM sort of person. I looked after all the kind of... If you ever had an email from Trainline uh, a couple of years ago or a text or a notification, chances are it's from my team uh, who you know, really excel when it comes to... Sort of dis- uh, we have problems like snow and so on. They send out notifications. So they really work really hard to get the information of different talks and compile it and so out. Um, or inspire people to travel new places. But we, we kind of went, okay, let, let's go and do this. And Train 9, to their, uh, their huge strength, said, do you know what? This is about the railway. This is about our world. We need to, to let you go and do this because we can see this is something that, that motivates you and, and those around us. So I went and spent, what, about a month and a bit just, I mean, I say romping around the country. I mean, it was. It was that summer, right? It was the summer before yeah, lockdown. Glorious. No one knew lockdown was coming and nobody knew COVID. It was just this glorious just and i said just we we we, we traveled the country and had a team over in traveling by train incidentally mm. uh, all over europe uh switzerland and there's a bit of sort of amsterdam rotterdam of course in the, in the first series and and we and just stuff that was just like up there things that i really wanted to go and do that that was just like and things i'd never heard of and i, I didn't know about rotterdam central Station. i didn't mm. know i knew about the old version but not a new version but the team because i i told them to go and buy <laughs> i bought some of them uh, various textbooks uh, and various well-known tomes on railway architecture. And I've got probably a, a decent library of, you know, sort of 60 or so books on railway architecture and engineering. I've got a mass over the years. Um, but here, I was like, right, guys, here are the key ones. And they, they researched them and they came up with stories I'd never heard of. And, and to, to, to stand there in a room and see three researchers looking through books that I love and come back and I'm a big board of post-it notes uh, underneath Camden Station, because in, in the archway, is it, uh, is it North Camden? What's the station near, uh, near Chalk Farm? Um, oh, I can't remember the time station. Um, these lovely arches. And uh, it's, it's great to listed. Oh, I should know this one. Um, someone will tell us in a minute. Uh, up in Camden. Some more of the nerds will come up here in the chat. Come on, chat. You're on. Please do. I'm, I'm, I'm not actually, sorry, I'm, I'm, I haven't got any notes with me. I'm, I'm, I'm doing this kind of, this, I'm, doing, I'm flying solo today. Um and uh, yeah, so, so, so it was just lovely. And kind of like, wow, you actually really care. And you're gonna, this is going to be good. This is going to be good. But then I, I, I didn't know how, I, I'll be honest, I think it's really good, that program. I, I think the whole program is great. And not because I did it, but because the team on it are brilliant. And they, they, they dealt with it carefully and kindly and thoughtfully and researched it well. And they put stuff past me and the NRM and the team we had. It's just we checked stuff. We just checked yeah. stuff. We made sure it was full of fact. And the commissioners at UKTV yesterday, and she said, I want those facts. Just don't, 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 don't hold back. Just, just go for it. You know, they all, I think that's it. Everyone got it. I think, and we're going to actually start the show proper, everyone. This is just the intro. Yeah. This, this, we're just warming up. But I think what, what's key is everyone involved in it got it. They got it. They got what you were trying to do. They got what... The production team were trying to do. Cheers! I've I've got sparkling water. I didn't have time to get a whiskey, but uh, uh, they they everyone got it, and it shows because it is a beautifully crafted, beautifully crafted bit of television. Um, it's lovely. It is, and we're going to talk lots about it momentarily. But before we do that, um, it only well, there's there's no news. There's no. I'm not doing any preamble other than just going straight into the introduction, uh, into the intro video. So, uh, so Tim, what's Tim going to say over the top of the intro credits this this episode? That's the that's the, that's the question which everyone in the chat. Signal boxes. <laughs> yes. So yes, Tim, we'll be back in uh, in forty five seconds. Everyone else, uh, we'll see you. Uh, we'll see you after the intro credits. Welcome to tonight's Rail Natter. <laughs> Intercity 225 fades away. There it goes. Ah, oh. we get Tim's lovely face with some delightful clocks in the background that I believe you have um, digitally manipulated to your own devices. Actually, Tim. <laughs> 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 oh, I was so pleased with that. So we, we did all the. Oh. <laughs> I, I, can I talk about this? Um, cause also, because I'm, I'm also watching this on delays. So I've, I've got two things on screen right now. I've got your YouTube channel on there, and I can see all the comments going down the side, mm. and my face, which is really weird. And then the other side, I've then got actually our faces. So it's, I'm, I'm a bit still all over the place. Right. Okay. So let's, let's talk about this. Um, yeah. So we had a, we had a, a photo shoot, Charing Cross, for, for series three, and I suppose it, it, it's just because 
and and this is this is this is the series three promo we used. And the reason we use this is because. And I've got the kind of like knowing look on my face because I knew what I wanted to have done to this picture. <laughs> yeah. And I'm quite, I'm quite pleased with myself, as you can see in this picture. Um, but the reason is it's just a bit knowing because it was just fun because we knew at this point that we'd got an audience of, you know, over the last three series, we're getting for UK TV, I mean, it's publicly available information, I think it's fair to say, you know, we're getting audiences in the first series, you know, if you consolidate it, you know, uh, you know Lies, you're getting you know, 250, 300,000 people up an episode, and then you know that again over a couple of months mm. sometimes. Um, so you're looking at a very good numbers for episodes. And what, what it meant was, was that people were loving it, and they loved the detail, and people were enjoying the references, and people were enjoying the fact we were making nods to things and linking stuff together. And it's always that we know the audience has invested their time in it, and, and that means a lot to me because... I know that a lot of people, you know, an hour a week, and that's a that's a genuinely, that's a big commitment, and and that I, I believe you should always give people something back for that. Um, and that's we always do the very best you can in broadcasting, right? Because if if someone invests the time in you, you should give it back to them because they're they're, they're relying on you um, to give you something good, great. So um, we did this, and it was twenty like seventh of September, twenty twenty one. Launching at eight o'clock, uh, mm-hmm. and on those NSA NSE clocks that I've always loved, um, and it was I think it was one of those those clocks that kind of actually made me think. Uh, Chris has got a, a, a Quantro, blimey! Um, oh, so um, yeah, so I, 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 I think it, it's the clocks that made me think. You know, our modern heritage is is sort of just starting to slip away if not careful. Mm, absolutely. Um, so, and, and some of you know as well that I'm I'm very I've been honoured to be part of the Railway Heritage Trust's advisory uh, panel uh, very recently, past a year or so. Um, Andy Savage, the, the current chief executive, um, uh, asked me to join it. And so I, I kind of help out on that, which is very interesting. But it's uh, looking at, you know, wh- wh- what's important and what needs to get grants and, mm. and where should the money go to be invested. And, and things like this are important to keep and, and make sure that they're just noted. There is a risk. There's always a risk. Uh, you and I feel, well, I know both of us feel very strongly about this, but but recent history stuff, and by recent history, actually, it's anything mm. kind of after the 60s, recent history yeah. stuff uh, often falls between the cracks and isn't and doesn't necessarily yeah. get the love because we perhaps, you know, feel more fondly about things that feel further away. And and, it, and it's and it's a real risk. Um, and so, yeah, it's really good that you're on that. Um, I mean, I, I, I've been lucky to live in modernist buildings for some of my life now. I lived in the Barbican for, what, seven years. I lived in Golden Lane Estate in the flat I had for, what, uh, two years. And, and so I've, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm intensely aware of the, the problems that come with living in, or having to work with, uh, concrete buildings yes. and, and problems they have. But, you know, they, they genuinely are fascinating. And places like Coventry Station are, again, some people will dismiss them and go, oh, I don't like that, yeah, because of the style. And I think one of the things that this programme does is say, do you know what, it doesn't matter about the style. The style is a, pref- is, is a way of just coating something quite often. Yeah. Um, the function of something is what's really important. And yeah, we have some lovely designs of things, but actually it's use to the system and its infrastructure is, is what's so key, really, in how people use it. So, you know, whether you like classical buildings, you like Tudor buildings, you like Italian buildings. In fact, over, over there in the background is, is, is my dear boyfriend's um, PhD thesis, because he is now Dr. Dr. David. Mm. Um, so, because he does Italian as buildings, which covers lots of, of railway buildings. So, again, he fact checked uh, some of the detail in some yeah, of the I was going to say, a useful like fact checker. Uh, yeah. uh, um, it was, it was kind of keen fact check. So, uh, so we sh- we should. I, I shall press. I shall press on, and we'll get bring up the nice. Uh, there's you for oh, series. Look at that! Look how young I look. Three years young, ago. young man. I know. Um, oh, it's worth just pointing out because I think this is nice. Tim Bowen says that um, his four year old daughter loves the program after she saw Tim sit on her favourite seat on the Linton and Barnstable railway. Oh, what is it, is it the one in, in the middle? Is it the one facing the engine at the back, or the one in the middle? It's the open observation bit. <laughs> a third class observation car, lovely. Yeah. Like, that's what you want, isn't it? <laughs> it is. It is. So yeah, the the architecture of the railway. I suppose we've kind of talked. To, we've we've explained to people who are watching who might not know what the series is, what it is. I don't think anyone watching this, of all the however many hundred people watching this at this moment, I don't think any of them won't know what the series is. Quite a few of them have said, I I live outside of the UK, how can I watch it? I know two countries where it's now available. Australia's one, and I think it's been picked up in in either Sweden or possibly the Netherlands, one of those two. Yeah, both. 
Um, Both. Oh, really? Okay, yeah. yeah. Uh, if I, I've got a list. I, I had to get out. I've got a list. I've, I've actually asked the team to notify me whenever it comes on because I, yeah. I, I want to do a little video to welcome people to it every every time we do one. Because again, you'll see this program isn't about just the British Railway network and the architecture, right? Because architecture doesn't and railways don't stop at the Channel Tunnel. You know, <laughs> this is about world influences. If you look at British railways, we have influenced obviously the rest of the world in some ways, but their designs and their yeah. styles have massively influenced the buildings and the architectural style of, of, of the UK. You know, and, and, and we must never forget that. It's fascinating how different countries have influenced things. I mean, the Weems Bay episode, I, I, I'm going to describe... Um, I described the station actually there's an architectural theme park. It's got Queen Anne, it's got you know J- Japanese, it's got Chinese, it's got a bit of American influence. You know, it, it, it's got a bit of Tudor. I mean, it is just remarkable. This building, just a massive different styles, and that is great. And it's fun to unpick a building and yeah, go, yeah. that comes from there and comes from there and look look at this over here. It's like a safari, you know, look at this. I've just wrote, been to Japan. I wrote about Paddington uh, and I hadn't realised the extent to which Paddington you know, you think of Paddington Station as one of the early kind of grand stations, but actually it, it borrowed from other railway stations. I think it borrowed from possibly Dresden State. You know, it was borrowing features. Paddington actually borrowed features from other stations that had already appeared. So, um, so yeah, we, we very much, there's all this... Oh, that's more stuff falling. Don't worry about that. Um, it's all this kind of borrowing of different uh, features, which which adds extra layers of fascination. No, I love it. It's really good. Um, uh, it's all part of the fun. So, is there anything else you want to say while we have this nice picture of... of a, That's a Snowden Mountain time. Railway. Well, can, can, can we start it, it off? The first, the first episode, the first series, right, was a mm. bit like me. It goes at bit bri- bri- breakneck speed because I, I speak to think, which is a problem because it means that I end up talking very, very quickly and people kind of go like, "What? What was that? What? Slow down, mate." And <laughs> and the the, the program kind of had that energy, I suppose. The episode one and it we, we cut between stuff and so so and they wanted to make because I couldn't go everywhere. Mm. I can, again, because I can't have all the time off um, to go and do all of them. And, you know, we had to, I do the voiceover for all of it. I don't go to all locations, as you probably see. I go to usually one or two locations per episode rather than all three. Um, but you're not thinking in lockdown, I couldn't go to all of them. It'd be irresponsible to go to all of them when you're doing lockdown. It, it's just what you can do and what's kind of essential for filming and what you think you, need, you can sort of do responsibly. There's, there's, there's a whole code of conduct for filming and so on that we had during lockdown. It's quite interesting. Um, but this one, for example, it just shows that we, it was all about trains. And actually, all the pictures we took were by trains. And I suppose the first set of stuff was that, yeah, about trains, we like trains, everyone likes trains. But this isn't about trains. This is a program about railways, people that don't like trains necessarily, but mm. also gets people thinking about railways a different ways. So it's funny that this picture, I always think it's funny, we, we took a picture of this engine behind me. It's like, there's nothing architectural in that yeah. image whatsoever. <laughs> um, and then if you look, if you, if you go into the next slide, you'll see kind of the, the, the kind of the scale of, of, of series one, which I have mm. to say, I, I'd like, when, when I first saw the first cut of a series one, it was the Swindon episode. And, you know, we talk about the Swindon and, and how the railway works came about and how this whole town which is a model town in full size was designed by the gwr and i cried i actually cried in that studio because to see this thing you worked on and you had no idea it would look like that and of course you're putting your heart on the line you're mm. yourself on the line and you think how is it new how's it going to look because i came under criticism for doing train spotting live a few years ago which i really liked but a lot of train people didn't like it because i think it perhaps it it, it took a different slant to mm-hmm. the hobby than they wanted to hear and it brought people into a safe space and maybe let people it, it maybe didn't it wasn't as sensitive maybe as people would like want it to be and um although i think it was great because i mean, it knocked down walls to the hobby and i had people i still get people today so, you know so, so, so emails and i remember that program um but people over the next few weeks were texting me and tweeting me saying i've just seen this unit 36507 does that mean it's a class 36 like yes it is like, <laughs> yeah. like people who are just office workers gone on the commute i loved that and people mm. were ticking off numbers i was like that's great so um yeah, you know, I, 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 I enjoyed that. But but this one dealt with things a lot more calmly, I suppose. In series one, it jumped about a bit, you know, but then what I loved about it was its sheer variety. But it showed off, and it wasn't about me, although it was it was being, yeah, really, Alfonso, you're right. It is. It's the railway born of it. It really is. And, 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 you know, it sits alongside other places like Derby as well, which we haven't yet covered. Mm. But Derby is a great railway town that we almost lost uh, back in the 70s and 80s. Um, 
you know, if, 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 if you look at some of those things on there, I mean, you see, I, I, the scale of this stuff, the Festin York Railway, a cottage I stayed in. I, I was the second person yeah. to stay in that cottage for my mate Podders. <laughs> uh, we not trust opened up. I was, I, was, I was a drunken weekend, that was, because you couldn't go anywhere by car. Uh, so we just, we just used the train. We just got hammered every day with gin and tonic and left the house at 10 o'clock. Um, brilliant fun. Um, sorry, I should be responsible about this, shouldn't I? But we had a lovely, it was like a with Neil and I, except with steam trains. Um, I mean, it sounds horrific, if I'm being honest. Um, but yeah, so it's a variety of stuff, but it's not about me. It was my journey around the place. I think I, I think I said at the start of this episode, you know, sh- my, my whole life, my my family has been intertwined with the railways of the world. Uh, showing you around these places is like showing you around my home. And it genuinely is because I feel at home on the railway. I feel at home in these places. And to be welcomed into them by the people who own them is genuinely wonderful. And to show people these unlocked doors and take them onto places, that is lovely. And you meet in these episodes across all three series. I, I counted up the other day. If you have, I think it's something like we, we've got, it's like a, a hundred and sixty experts, hundred sixty seven experts, of which I think about forty percent are women, which is nice for a bit older than architecture and engineering. Yeah. Traditionally seen as being the percentage that the ratio is much worse than that, shall we say, less equal. Yeah, uh, traditionally, so I, I, yeah. I, 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 I'm, 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 I think the team are very proud of that, that we've, yeah. that we've had a, a nice balance of voices. Um, we have some way to go in the future, I think, to, to balance other other uh, other things out. But but they, they try very hard under the circumstances you've got uh, in, in a short amount of time and in a, in a challenging budget um, and to make television that, 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 that is delivered quite rapidly. Yeah, um, and there's I, a certain... I, I mean, there is a, a feel of quality of the of the show as well that I think... Probably the budget does a good job of 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 hiding. You know, I, I don't want to say papering over the cracks, but you acknowledge yourself. It's a li- no, no, it's a very limited budget, and actually, it looks like a very yeah. it looks like a much higher budget show than it actually is because the production team were. It's a very good production team who know how to make it all stitch it all together in such a way that it looks very professional. And there's a really good team from top to bottom in production who make it look really sharp and really crisp from 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 the planning from the the, the, the execs and the producers at brown bob you know to the commissioners at uk tv there is a desire to there's no point making stuff that's just quick and cheap and look, i might do on my twitter because because or don't you i'll be honest about this because television lets you have still just about the budget to actually mm. make something genuinely beautiful and um, at pace that an audience will adore and and UK TV knows his audience and, and the commissioners and the channel controller there, uh, Gerald and, 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 and the team, know what the audience is going to be like. And, and what's interesting is series one was done and then we had we did some series research, some, some, some audience research and we had feedback and all that feedback was taken on for series two and three. So there's a slight change of pace, slow down a little bit. And, and oh, you, Richard Smith says, do you learn anything about S1 or 2? And series, absolutely. And we just slowed stuff down a little bit and we just let stuff just just explore yeah. it a bit and also we did things like oh i suppose um we did things like we went to the, net, the network real archives a bit more so we got more archive stuff in and and i'll be honest with you we, we, we didn't have much archive in series one because it was very expensive from yeah. different sources yeah. but then we showed series one and various people said why didn't you have our archive in? yeah it's very expensive and they said well actually this is this is entertainment. This program, but also you're doing this as an educational piece, and it's from the heart. So we're not going to charge you that. We're going to charge you this instead because it it, it was mm. it was seen as being that this is a good thing, and the whole industry came together to make this. I mean, honestly, like Tox Network Rail, and I mean from the very very top of Network Rail. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, uh, it's fair to say that I, I've uh, we're involved in the uh, selection of, of of locations and uh, making stuff happen. Um, and uh, you know, and um, we're grateful for that. Um, right the way through to to, to you know, different teams across the country, and then series two, of course, it comes in because they've seen series one. And go, you know, we're responsible people. We're not fly by night. We're doing this because we care. Yeah. And so, uh, so other stuff we did like on the fly. I remember a, a chapter in animation of King's Cross one night on the train on the way back from work, working at Brown Bob. He was like, "Oh, on the train, yeah, I, I, I did this three D animation of King's Cross to get in episode three. I was like, "What?" <laughs> I mean, he did it in his spare time because he was loving working on the program so much, and and that shows how people, the team, love doing it because they started doing stuff. And they're like, oh, I had this idea to add this little map in. So again, series two's got more maps. Series three a bit left fewer, fewer maps. I should say series two has fewer maps because we ended up having to deliver 
because of lockdowns and there being a lack of television coming out, we ended up having to deliver like it's 10 episodes in 12 weeks, which is insane for a documentary of 12 hours. Um, but um, why is archive expensive? Gareth, that, 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 that's, that's an extremely... Well, there's it, 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 two reasons. There's two reasons why, why archive is expensive. One is because... Um, it's a really good question because it, it infuriates me as a historian who wants to publish things to, 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 to take stuff out that I've found in, in archive. Oh, I'd love to show this. And then you can you approach the, the archive owner and say, can I publish this? And they say, oh, well, yes. Sometimes it is about extracting value from the assets. Sometimes it is. So that, However, there are routes around that quite often that, 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 that we know of. But you've got to remember as well that Often assets are owned by museums, and the uh, museums own come has a been, which didn't really frankly, screwed over by, by COVID and so on over yeah. the past few years, yeah. two years. Even before that, though, museums have have, have tried a very difficult line of of how to survive. And um, you know, museums, the third sector, I suppose, you know, the cultural sector has been has been ravaged. Um, by COVID, and even before that, you know, exists on a breadline. And many people, I'm sure, watching this are aware of of, of, of how museums work. It, they, they're not; these are not organisations that, that have much money. They're not laughing about. You know, the NRM isn't sitting there going, "Oh, what should we spend a million pounds on today?" The money they've had to go for is but have you budgeted every single penny of it? And even lo- local museums, especially them, they rely on the good nature of people. So, when a television company comes in and says, "Can we please use this image?" For commer- on a commercial television station, of course they're going to say, of course it's commercial purposes. You're yeah, because they've got to think about the, the archivists, they've got to think about how they maintain so, that, that, that that resource. Yeah, absolutely. And rightly, they, they pay for it. But um, yeah. the, I, I yeah. suppose the good thing about series about the S- series one having gone out was that, as you say, all of a sudden people knew what you were doing. They knew what the tone was. They knew what you were trying to achieve. And it was like, ah, okay, yeah, we, we get what's going on here. We understand it. Um yeah, I, very briefly, I'm glad that you saw the Swindon one first, because actually, not that I want to say I have favourites, but it was possibly one of my favourite episodes of the series, the Swindon mm. episode. Honestly, a really lovely episode. I don't know what yeah. I don't know what it is about. Well, there are lots of things about it, but it's just really nicely crafted. I think it's worth also, we're talking about quality, it's worth a shout out to um, to Matthew Slater, who uh, who scored, who put the, together the yeah. soundtrack, the, 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 the original scoring underneath, which just... Actually, it just adds that texture, really lovely texture to it all. It's playful, it's but it's serious when it needs to be, and it's it's yeah, it's it's, it's really good. I again, I, I don't get a chance to see a lot of this stuff. I mean, again, I, I, so I the process is, is quite long and convoluted. The way we, we write scripts is quite collaborative, and you know, and it's quite interesting. Um, and we would get facts and stories and narratives together. Often, is, is driven by a producer director. Um, you know, but a researcher working. I get to choose some of the well, not choose. I, I throw in some of the. The, the, the ideas in places and, and the team then work with some of them and they cut all their own stuff as well mm. but yeah as, as, as Paul notes you know archives do cost money to store and manage so, you know, they have paid somehow um, but it's you know it, it's in budgets that are ever uh, we must talk about this as well television budgets are being ever squeezed and and it's because the proliferation of channels and the audience diversification um, being split you know I mean, I mean to have a couple hundred thousand people watched a television program on yesterday. I mean, it, it is generally one, it, it is one of their biggest programs. Mm. Um, apart from Secrets London Underground, uh, which actually, is, actually did, a, did a little bit better the first episode, <laughs> which is great. Um, so it's, you know, it's about how, you know, how do you learn from each, each program and, and build on them and what do you do to, to make it better, but do it with care and attention and detail. And again, someone asked, you know, was Underground a spin off? Yes, it was, uh, in, in, in as much as Sidney and I met. And I, I met Presidio previously somewhere else, uh, the museum actually, uh, years before. And I've worked with the museum on and off. On I've written stuff for them and I've done presentations, all sorts of stuff. Yeah, you know. but we but we met uh, previously and did the Down Street piece. And then actually, it was such a nice piece to do. Mm. We thought, you know what, there's, there's a whole thing here. There's more to do here. And Rob, the producer, there sort of went off and did. We'll talk later on. Um, yeah, so that's it really. Uh, I'm conscious of time. Yeah, got it. We are 34 minutes in and we've got about two slides through. So, right, right. okay. I don't know what signal this is. What's is, this thing? It's, uh, a, <laughs> a, I don't know. it's some small signal box, apparently. Never heard of it. Um, I just th- This whole thing is about going to places that I never thought I'd get to see. And this is the series one and we didn't know about it. And so we ended up doing this wonderful 
piece in a building that I loved. And that's what series one means to me. In fact, the whole program, right? It's all about going to go and see stuff that I never thought I'd get a chance to do. And you find some noted here, local experts and people who either look after it, run it, have built it, have designed it, or just love it for some reason, or I've studied it. You know, these people are dedicated to that building. And that is just wonderful. That is wonderful because people, when you ask them, one of my favourite questions, I will always ask people in any interview is, why do you love this building? And the answers you get back from that question are just sometimes the most moving. I mean, I, I, there was, the, you know, I remember, uh, again, I keep crying. The, the chap who designed uh, the, the, the building called Snowden, mm, the modern yeah. art. And he stood there, and he was almost in tears, watching people use his bill. And that is just why it's wonderful. What a privilege to watch that. Um, and again, the team at, at, at Shrewsbury, <laughs> at uh, Shrewsbury, Seven Bridge Junction, I mean, brilliant. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> um, and I, I, I've got a funny feeling I might return there in the not distant future of something else. Um, but yeah, it, thank you, Network Rail. Thank you very much. And again, it, it's, it's going to these things and showing people. Because you know what? They couldn't organise an open house day where, you know, quarter of a million people go through it in an hour, uh, but we do. And and it's about taking cameras in, and because they've gone, I can, I've got the privilege of going in there, it's my responsibility to be your eyes and ask the right questions, because I am there to ask the questions I think the audience wants to know. And then, yeah, I, I honestly had time in my life, obviously. <laughs> but also, I've got to do a job, and that's to ask the right question. Yeah, yeah. Um Oh, nice. And this Talking is the stuff, right? and this is yeah. stuff I love. It's also walking and going like, it's just spotting stuff. It doesn't go on camera, but it's just stuff that we spot and go like, you can't, like, like these people love the, these people love the railway. Like my <laughs> other diesel, you could, it's just, I like this. And wherever you go across the, all the series and you encounter all the experts, all the people, you very rarely meet someone who is, is kind of, I mean, they're gruff, fine, you know, interrupting their, their daily work and television camera and some idiot called Tim walks in going, can you tell me why you like building? And like, I've got to do a job. Um, but actually, it's all about people and their passions and their enthusiasm and the love that is lavished upon buildings and worked in them. And, you know, that is that we're very lucky in this country. Indeed, you have people who work on a system that binds us all together. And that so many of us actually love. Mm, absolutely. Um Oh, I'm so glad you put this in. This is one of my favourite things from Series 1. That we, In fact, on, the, on our first episode you did, we talked about this, and it was very cool. This is Ribblehead Viaduct, as it almost became. Yeah. And this is the kind of, this is the kind of stuff that I love about this programme. You go in there, and I, not many people know that these days, that they almost demolished Ribblehead Viaduct, because this is the reason that actually they wanted to shut the line. Mm. And, and one of the guys was like, I can save the viaduct, I can save it. And so we met the chap who proved, <laughs> he proved on one of the piers that he could do it and, and save it with this new infill that he constructed. Um, but wow, so the British Rail put forward some different, different ideas of how to replace the viaduct. And there are some quite quite, quite good designs here. I, quite I was like, going to say, I, I, part of me is a little, there's a little bit of, of sadness that they didn't build the one in the bottom corner because I think that... You that, and me that, both. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's gorgeous. It'd be awesome. I bloody love it? that. Yeah. I, know, I mean, Rebelhead's great. But I quite like that. Um, it's quite. I mean, the the one in, in the main picture is quite HS two actually. Some of the new stuff going across the um, the Colm Valley at, at Denham looks. Yes, it is actually um, with that angular action. Actually, you might notice that the the piers in that one are quite similar to the design of the Selby diversion. I dare say because they are coming from. They might well have been coming from a similar design office at the time. Uh, yeah. So. so that you can see in the, in Settle Museum, um, and again. To go have a chance to look around. So Mark Rand, uh, who owns the signal box, not the signal box, the um, the water tower at Settle. So yeah, I used to live in the old museum up there. Come have a look. And this is this this they rescued from a porter cabin, British Rail, for it got knocked down. And so I thought I'll, I want to have that. So there's some pictures there. Right, next slide. Next slide. Yes. Please, uh, Prime Minister. And um, oh, Josie. So this is the privileged access we get, right? To top of St Pancras roof. I hate heights. You might have noticed. Yeah. I hate heights. There we are on top of it. But this is about showing because the program has got that there is a kind of agenda here, and it's from me, all of us, the program, which is it doesn't matter how old something is, how new it is, it's got a program job to do now, right? So, so whether you're, it's all about how we reuse things and look at buildings and keep using them in different ways and how buildings learn, 
you know, how we learn from buildings. And St. Pancras is a great one. There's a gun beneath its skin. And Josie, she is the superstar heritage sort of advisor for HS1 Limited. And uh, she worked with, with Michael Fox there as well, who's just joined. And the team there is brilliant because they know how to look after that station and what goes on HS1. H- but the proof got up on that roof. Mm. Great. Yeah, shuffling yeah. terrifying. I, I was going to say you, you, throughout series two and three, you were pushing your, you were pushing that, uh, pushing your limits even further on what you could do height wise. Uh, Bristol being another one. Anyway, right. So uh, here's you pointing at the front of a train. Everyone, pe- people, are, people are remembering the joy of this from uh, from 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 our first from the architecture of the railways built one rail natter crossover. I enjoyed you looking and Why pointing. Why are you making big and small? I don't know. I think it's possibly because Skype, when you alt tab, Skype decides it likes to change resolution for no reason. Um, which is I don't like this. Don't worry, I'm, I'm resizing you at rapid pace. Don't worry. Um, right. Uh, so again, it's again, it, it's not about what the buildings themselves are, how they're designed. Often it's about what happens inside them, right? Because mm-hmm. it's the story of the buildings. What's important about how they use. So it, we went up there and went, you know what? There's a great story here. Yeah, it's a massive warehouse, <laughs> effectively. It's a massive production facility. Mm-hmm. But why is it shaped like that? Why do they build like that? What happens inside the Hitachi, you know, sort of facility they've got up, up at Newton Nuclear? So we had to look at those, and I got to damage a Hitachi unit. And if, that, if that's ever gone in service without them fixed, I'm terribly sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, Ellen, the art team. Um, but again, I just want to show you a in your grab. Right, so from the very, very new to one of the world's oldest, in fact, it's the world's oldest railway workshop. Mm. You know, look, they, they've been building engines in there for three centuries. Three consecutive centuries, they've been building classes of engine in there. And yeah. there's George England coming to, with, with, with Azalea and Lucy, who were kind of the two of the, 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 the core team on Series One. And then they show that we go from very old to very, very new. But also, just the, again, we had so much fun in all these episodes, every, no matter what we've done. But the crew behind this are lovely yeah, and they're definitely. brilliant and they're just, you know, they're a good laugh. And because we, and they come away going, Actually, this is really interesting. Can we do, what else can we do? Um, I they really like were. Oh, I had the privilege of working with uh, with the t- with the same team actually when I, for for the two sequences that I actually did Connell Bridge second, but it was actually the first thing that appeared, as, as you know. And working with the team, and they were lovely. so I had two days. I had two full days with them, and they were just lovely, absolute pleasure to work with, and they really cared. They knew what they, they knew. They understood the material. They were just yeah, it was lovely, really lovely, Brilliant. pleasure. Love. Again, again, throughout that the program, again, different crews, different places, different series, but all just genuinely, just, just thoughtful, careful, thoughtful the audience, thoughtful the final product, and you just don't stop shooting. That's yep. the thing, right? Yeah. And it, it, people are like, oh, it's easy to tell you, just point the camera, right? I mean, they don't call me 20 take done for nothing. <laughs> um, <laughs> but seriously, the, the biggest thing about making television is it's really boring. It's so boring making television. You think I had a lovely time. Yeah, I get a small amount of time, half an hour, a day maybe, to kind of do my own thing. But actually, we're up at six o'clock. You are in and out of breakfast, out on the road, doing a thing, and you are getting content for the start to the end of the day, and you're interviewing. Because often, these locations, you've only got a day to film that. Yeah. And filming the winter, I'll come to that in series two. This is series one, all filmed in the summer, as you can tell. Series two and three, we filmed throughout winter lockdowns, mate. And, and, and honestly, that is... That's quite hard, and you've got like six hours of day, yeah, daylight. Very little day. daylight, and you've got it. That's mm. for people who aren't familiar with how it works. You know, the you're, the, the the production team, the, the 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 director of photography, the 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 director who's there, is got a list, a huge long list of different pickup shots they need. Like it's lots and lots oh, yeah. of different shots, and they've got to do them over and over again because they don't know the edit. You think these things come out, you don't know what shots you might need, so you have to try yep. very carefully to get a, a, a useful shot. To allow the whole thing to stitch together and, and make sense to the viewer, it's 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 a it's a very sophisticated and regimented process. Yeah, every, every interview is done three times, so I have to remember what questions I ask each time, and I have to have a script. I do my pieces of camera as well, so I have to learn those in advance or make them up on the spot. Yeah. If I make them up on the spot, I've got to then deliver them three times and talk to the camera like this and say, "Hello, I'm here at Swindon. Oh, it's so exciting," and you have to and chunk it. Oh wow! I mean, it, every day it's when you finish two weeks and we, we try and break it up with no more than a week. You have a couple of days off, and it, it is hard graft. This, this, this is television making at pace, and it is so much fun, but it is exhausting. Yep. So, and then we get so that was series one. So now series. So people remember for the, the, the second episode, the rail natter, the architecture of the railway built cross. We already talked about series two, but here they are. It's yep. a nice selection. Um, I just thought I'd just show a, a variety of stuff here. And again, you, you look at the pace of it; it slows down a bit. But again, what happened was for this one, the team. Said, look at two series one aired at the start of lockdown. 
Mm. Because perfectly they're... timed, genuinely perfectly, perfectly timed. timed. So again, I mean, higher than usual visitor uh, viewer numbers for television across the board, and um, because everyone's stuck at home and can't go out. And suddenly, series one, here's a program about people going out and travelling again. And yes. <laughs> It was the first new program about traveling for weeks on telly. And people like into that May, they were like, oh my goodness, we can go somewhere. Um, so yeah, it, it, it was, it was, no, I will not do that, David Shepherd. I will not do that three times. Certainly not. Uh, I, 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 I'm one of far more enough. Um, it's quite funny. So we took better pictures of these ones. It used to be staged pictures occasionally, but there's things here. So it's Weems Bay, well, Albert Bridge, and, and, and I suppose Windsor. I can't see Piccadilly Line. Yeah, Piccadilly Line, just- Linton. Yeah. And the pictures here don't necessarily match no. the, the, the thing, but but it, it, it's it's what the kind of the key thing is in that in that thing. Um, but it was just nice, you know. What a lovely variety of stuff, and that's what's key about this thing, right? It's not just saying here's a hotel, here's an hour at railway hotels. That was my proposal for, for the. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They went no 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 mix it all up, yeah. and that's where it goes. That's how it works, and so it just. They take a lot of care in this program, and uh, th- there's a there's a th- the famous wall of post-it notes. How they mix yes. stuff together, um, <laughs> in different colours and themes, and how. You, but series one that was easy. Series two is much harder because suddenly you're against COVID. Mm, yeah. And what I think the, the key thing I want to talk about is if I, I get my presentation, I'll say what, what's coming next in the next slide. Hang on a second, I'm just. Gonna, I, I haven't looked at any notes for this. I'm just I'm just I'm just nattering at okay. high speed. It's you and a mask in a train. I mean, every day of the year. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, you go, again, I think it just shows, right? That, that, that's that's what. So go to the next slide. Yeah. That's what we delivery. So, so there's Simon there. So Simon's was one of the kind of associate assistant producers on the camera. That's us filming in a, a class one fifty. Is it? No, it's, or is it a castle class? I think it's a castle. castle yeah, class. it looks like an HST. Castle. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, over the Saltash Bridge. Um, sorry, Rival Bridge. And that train was empty, apart from but. Like, Three people and us, right? So it's us filming. It. That's how it was to travel. And the next slide, if you go to the next one, look at Waterloo Station. Yeah. I mean, it is weird. <sighs> Very weird. Miserable. Friday night, quarter past nine. Miserable. And I'm, I live in central London. I'm, I, I, as you know, I live near Underbridge Station. I can hear the announcements. <laughs> we all can. <laughs> Late at night. Um, so, so the, you know. The, the, this was all filmed over lockdown. So we had so series two and three got a very different feel. Um, but particularly series two, because that was filmed when we had to do it in really strict lockdowns. Yeah. And we had a code of conduct to work to. And there were quite often, uh, there, there, there were times like in series three, Stoke Station, when we filmed Stoke, um, and it was us and two other people on the platforms. You know, Stoke Station, it's massive. At Waterloo Station, there, you know, it's just, it was, it was sad, and, it, and we have to ask questions. You know, in a pandemic, should you ask a volunteer to come out from a, from a museum mm. to travel? Now they can do, but should you? You know, and and, and and we didn't know then what the virus was doing or, or how it was transmitted. So you know, we were very careful to ask. You know, could you ask someone who might be more susceptible? We thought to so you have to be careful who you ask and why you ask it. And of course, also in crossing Europe. As it, again, I think Rob's gone on, on, on camera to say this in the past, our exec producer. We, we, we had issues where we had to build air bridges effectively and go, like, okay, so if we were going to do Sweden now, where can we send them next? Yeah, oh, yeah. okay, France is off the list. Right, so that's all the French content gone. <laughs> zero two and three. Yeah, right. yeah. And then I get a phone call saying, Tim, what do you know about Greek railway architecture? And I'd be like, give me an hour. Yeah. Um, and so I go and research kind of some top level stuff and go back and research, and research stuff but again stuff happened in the UK as well so you know, I'll be honest the North Staffordshire Railway for Series 3 that, that that wasn't in my top list it was way down my list but actually that came about because we went we can't get to a particular location I'm not saying where it was um, yeah. that it, it was closed off because of Covid and, and good for good reason um, and they're like, we have to have a phone. Have you got an idea of what's, what could you do? And I was like, mm, okay, I'll come back to you. And so I gave ideas to, the, to one of the researchers, and then they went off and turned it from my those ideas into this narrative and weaved it together. And then we kind of, again, it's this lovely collaborative 
way of working. That I've Which was nice, very... actually, because that was that was a bit of a revelation for me. I knew it was an interesting little bit, little tidbit, but actually, architecture. I know we're not even on series three yet, but we will be shortly. Yeah. Everyone. But, um, but so, so, it's this, this yeah. is about how, to, in lockdown, how things have changed. Um, but this was what series two did really was, I suppose, if you go to the next series slide, is is it should be like, like Wingfield, right? Which so the, and, and Wingfield, this is this is the first time the big sh- shutters have come off that building mm. for years. Big metal shutters. So its eyes had been, you know, let's just opened up, and the glasses had come off, and it was just shown. First, this is one of the most remarkable railway stations in the country. We don't even know about it. It sits in this wooded glade in Derbyshire. And I was contacted by uh, by Barry of the Derbyshire Historic Buildings Trust after series one to Tim, come and look at this. Give we do it another series, and we got commission. So that was on our list because you know it's a great story. A little station preserved from the 1960s or just left to just rack and ruin um and they're restoring it it's lovely and actually and the update is of course is, is that they, they, they they've got Austria funding and local funding and heritage trust funding and it's going to become a little sort of little business center you know a, a new use alongside a high-speed main line of an old railway station retains heritage features and a, a wonderful thing and there's some and someone's noted just, just how you know it's a Greek, it's like a temple. It looks, and and yeah, yeah. you can tell the story about how this whole railway line and, and, and this, this line that runs through the Midlands um, had different architectural styles, and they kind of they, they, they replicated or impressed the local landowners with different styles, yes. depending on what they wanted the Ellen to think. It's just ah, oh, it's just you get Jacobean and Tudor, and you yeah, get it's, 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 Lally, it's, but just, it's uh, Italian, yeah. a Greek. It's just brilliant, and the story of that is wonderful. What a treat, because people often don't know what is hidden in plain sight, you know, in the Midlands. How many areas. people have journeyed, you know, going between, you know, Leeds or whatever and, and down to Birmingham or the, or the Midlands have, have whizzed past this at pace on their way south towards Derby without thinking of it? I certainly am one of those people, having whizzed past it. I saw a couple of buildings as you go past. We don't think much of them. You go past them 110 miles an hour. And yeah, here it is. Quite, here it is. Quite. And- Oh, there's, a, there's a segment in there to see of a train going past at 110 yeah. miles an hour, which we t- a bit like the one you timed uh, for your shot. And just so you know, I know how many takes that one took, Gareth Dennis. Um, <laughs> 20 takes, Dennis. Um, there, there, there's um, a train goes past, and I kind of go sort of, and trains go past at speed, and it was like that took four takes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, golly. I mean, and, and in the rain. That's quite depressing. Um, next slide, please. Yes. We, we, yes. we talk about things in, hidden in plain sight. The story of Ben Levi that was in story number was in episode number one. Number two, I got to go back to it and, and meet the team behind the Iron Giant, they call it. Um, and I got to go down the scaffolding underneath the bridge, which is, which is gone now. The, so you, you can't get that view anymore because they're mm. on the scaffolding. Down, that was down a lovely, I'm so glad you got to revisit. That was a lovely moment. It really was. That is genuine. It, it, it's one of the World Monuments Fund's uh, big sort of, uh, winners, that one. And it's not fair to say that our programme help uh, it may have helped the case particularly in some places uh but it was nice to give a building or structure of a, 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 a airtime that people didn't know and mm. certain people have gone oh my god yeah like what the, what where is it i i didn't know about it before we did the research this thing i, was, I had a venley i was like what's divide out look into it it is incredible absolutely yeah, what a survivor it is incredible now, talking of things you don't really know about hello i love clocks i love massive clocks <laughs> Me, he says, putting his glass of wine down. Um, <laughs> when I was five years old, I proudly told my parents I wanted to grow when I grew up, I wanted to be a horologist. And um, it's a love big clocks. And so one of the joys of, of going around railway stations is finding clocks. Because, of course, railways brought about standardised time. Railway time, we know this, right? And you know, there are wonderful things like in Bristol. The, the most well-known, of course, is Bristol, the Bristol Exchange clock, you know, where the, I think it's 11 minutes difference from Bristol time and standard time. And the, the Bristolians kept their little clock up with a one red hand and one green hand just so it always goes around just to prove that they're different than everybody else. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, I, mean, I, love Bristol, I love Bristol, but it's very Bristol. Um, <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> just, I mean, you expect it of Manchester. But, really, um, but, but this is an example of where we we said to somebody, could we go up in up in the the pediment up up, up there? Look at like up in the top. And someone, went, oh, we've got a key somewhere. We'll go look up in there. And so Huddersfield Station, um, the station manager, it was Andy, said, Do you know what? I haven't been up there for ages. I'd love to show up. Let's go. Let's go up. <laughs> and so they found the keys, and we got on a ladder, went up, and we kept it up there. And, and to go up in the top, Huddersfield Station, 
where normally the, cl- the clock maintenance guys from uh, Smith Clocks Derby go and restore it and, and, and just check every year. You know, one person does it every year, and we're somewhere different. But then to go up there and look at the clock and go, this clock has given the time to, to this t- the city of Huddersfield, you know, for 100 or whatever years it is. This is the clock that set the time for this city. This is what, by, it, it, this device has governed the lives of this entire city effectively mm. from the time the station was built and that that is a wonderful moment to see this thing that is an original clock um which i noticed when i went up there but and obviously it's an electrical uh, part of it. there's bits that are original within it um and we found records and I, i've dug out records in the archives of of, 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 of who did build it which is an interesting story um but what a treat and to take people up there and then to find up in there they're actually sort of you know, hewn, all, all the beams up there have been numbered, you know, one by one. Was it, of course, yeah, 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 I remember. All, the, all assembled downstairs, and you can see how they've got the cross and then brought it upstairs and reassembled them, but again, hacked out with a chisel. Like, this is, this is, this is pretty good stuff. Mm. Right, onwards. And onwards, on. yes. Oh, yeah, I remember that. So, yes, this is beautiful. This, this is lovely. Perchance it is not dead, but sleepeth. Now, this is the postcard that was written and put on a wreath of chrysanthemums, I think it was, on the buffer stops, um, either in Barnstable, I'll give it Barnstable Town, um, when the railway was, was actually closed down, um, in the railway was closed down on, on the closing day. And, and somebody uh, who has actually been in contact with me has actually emailed me, or kind of saying, I, it was my grandfather or something, or, or, or we found this in a book or something, mm. wasn't it? Look, we gave it to them back. And so to, to hold this thing that has motivated these enthusiasts, this little piece, you know, and, and actually motivated enthusiasts the world over to restore their own mm. railway. This is like, this is, again, like the Talithlin Railway. Like when you go into Talithlin, which I, I remember at Talithlin, the reason I do so much volunteering and do so much video stuff and have fun there is because we have so much fun. You know, it, it's a, every day there is a railway adventure, you know, it, but it is, it's because it's where it began. Mm. And and we have fun because we, we we play trains there safely and responsibly, but we play trains and we play trains to bring people in. And this is about the motivational stuff. So this is, is something I discovered uh, that or we found it in the Marshall. And what a, and uh, you know to have access to this stuff and to be given stuff by series two shows just how much these people yeah. around the world are going. We want to share this mm. and let's do this carefully. And we've got something to show you that's very precious, and we'd like the world to see it, please. It's and lovely, that's and, and, and indeed, on the fur- and further up the line from Barnstable, there's this fine viaduct, which have, which given that I have family in that part of the world, I've never you gone do. underneath it knowingly. So I need to visit and uh, and prod it. It's lovely. I walked across it, mm. and you know, it's quite funny. Um, there are obviously other people in this world who are, uh, who make programs about this. There's a man called Mr. Portillo, Mr. Bell as well, mm-hmm. another person who makes programs, <laughs> Mr. Marshall. And a couple of people, I count on people who, are, who are, I know very well, and uh, one in particular is a very good friend of mine. Um, so I find it very, very funny when people compare us or, or, or make c- comparisons and go, oh, we did that as well. And I'm like, yeah, I'm like we know because we do it like, yeah. um, we go to the pub together um, <laughs> and we exchange notes. But, but, other of those people in the real world or Judy Walter, for example, does a programme on something and someone goes, oh, and you, you, he complains. He'll say, didn't you know that Julie Walter went to that programme? Well, I mean, we don't all make notes. We don't, we don't all sit there going like, ring up Julie and go, excuse me, Julie, you're doing a programme at so-and-so. Where are you going? You know, um, we have different schedules. So uh, Rob Bell actually went to this, the, the location as well. He had a different take. He walked the entire length of the line. We focused on the architecture. And so uh, it was quite funny. We Walking across the south, I thought, no, we've done this before. And as we left the we left the viaduct, the chap and I went, of course, Rob Bell was here last week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, 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 and it's like, oh, it's like, oh, okay. So I'm not the first. He goes, oh, no. He goes, you lot, you know, you train lot, you know, you're all, all you enthusiasts, you know, you're doing a lot on the engineering lot, you're all doing the same thing. I was like, wow. So, but again, it, it focuses you to find out what, what's different and unique and yeah. what, what angle can you give it. So, what I love of this program is, yeah, we go to locations that maybe other folk have been to or Patillo's been to before or anyone's been to. You no, know, not everyone's watched that program. Um, and often you're picking up new people and have a very different take on things because I, I want to know about the buildings and the engineering. I want to genuinely how it was built and why it was built. Next slide, please. Yes, uh, Mr. Mr. Here's uh, some bins. Sometimes it isn't so good. And sometimes people say to us, um, OK, have you had problems? And it wasn't a problem. But sometimes you get somewhere and... 
I'll, I don't use this word lightly. It's a bit more crap than you think it was going to be. Yeah. Um, so I was like, we're out the back of the bins, Linton Barnes support. I was like, oh, look at this. And it, it's just, uh, I use the word accretions a lot. And Mr. Roger, Mr. Roger Ford, what I've noticed, he says, I love that word. From, yes. I, this is a great, I'm super to you. Pevsner, yeah. It, 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 Pevsner uses it quite a lot as well. It, pe- accretions means things that have accreted over time, stuff that's added to a station or a building, that are added needlessly, and it just doesn't belong there. It bump, you know, it's just yep. it's an accreted bump. It's just crap over something. And here is... Um, Blackmore Gate Station or Intermarsable. And it's just like, oh, it's, oh, I mean, yeah, it's fit for purpose as a restaurant now. But somewhere hiding underneath there is a Swiss chalet yes. uh, out the back of the bins, mate. <laughs> yeah. That was a letdown. But, 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 but what saved it was a brilliant contributor. Yes. You know, the architecture, a bit rubbish. But the contributor who owned this place was great and he's a wonderful man and he runs a brilliant pub that you know delivers he's not he's publican by trade and he's, he knows what his customers want and so it's to, to see him going you know what we know what to do the building's interesting but it's not that interesting now because matter but how you use it now is what's important it's about how you reuse buildings that are long gone from railway territory Absolutely. next slide please ah so here we reach series three at series long three. last Good Lord, I've, I've had an hour. I, I will try and wrap up the things ten minutes. I'm terribly sorry. Series three. Look, People are here um, for series three. People, you have you have to stay for another two hours to cover series three. I've uh, look. I've swapped out one of the thumbnails as well to the correct picture. Look, here we are. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. Oh, <laughs> sweetheart. Oh, so, there's a reason we like you. Um, so again, <laughs> Newcastle. I, I can't read all that. So Newcastle, Newcastle Warncliffe, Charing Cross, Cross Bramall. But look, there's so much coming up, and and people go, "Oh, you're wearing that scarf again." Do you know why, Rick? It's because we filmed this in January. Yeah, it's cold. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Freezing. Yeah, well, we look. I'm very much looking. So, so we plotted around, and, and we're going to talk. I, I might be shooting your fox here. We t- we we plotted around Curzon Street together when they first opened up. Do you remember? Um, that was ages ago. That was pre lockdown I have got so actually, and, and I know on the HS team, H2 team, watches this. And, and just and what I love about this thing is, is the railway is that you realise actually, I people watch this won't realise this, but a lot of the comms people, are, are like, they're straight laced, you know, they've got a job to do the railways on message, but actually they are unabashed, uncloseted railway geeks right? because you've got to be. You, you, some of them aren't, but at its core, all of us love the railway, mm. and so one of them I know watches this a lot, and so he, he Ben. When you're watching this, you will have okay. Often sends me the good stuff, you know, like I've got this thing, you know, I've got this, it's great. Um, and so, you know, he arranged for me to go down, down, down uh, uh, the new tunnels as well. But he arranged for you and me to go and see the, the roundhouse and go and see inside mm. um, the Coastal building. We couldn't go inside it during uh, the, the actual filming of the episode for this because of just some other work that was going on during the time. Yeah. But we have got content. But what was nice about this one is like Ben, and that's next week's episode actually. It's like yeah. Ben, I was like Ben, I still haven't published a video. I haven't put it into a video. I haven't got time to edit it together. And that's a year later, right? You know, I did yeah. this. Um, and I'm like, it's okay. You've made a television program that's going to have hundreds of thousands of views. I was like, fine, because you're off the hook. So thanks, yeah. Ben. <laughs> you're letting off the hook. Um, that's it. Yeah. I did it. The last episode actually is quite interesting. One. We'll come on to it in a minute. But um, again, next slide, please, mm, is Newcastle. Yes. And look again, Rob Langham, a friend of mine, who's just love. Uh, just, just Rob, if you're watching this, um, thank you because people like you are what make this program. It's not me. I'm just the chatty person who doesn't stop bloody talking, who loves his stuff. Uh, I'm the fool there in a blue helmet who hasn't got PTS. Um, but Rob, you know, in the middle again, another historian who spent more time devoting his work to writing in in book form than I have and has, is a very accomplished author and, and has worked at Beamish and so on in other museums. Um, uh, Rob, look up Rob Langham. Um, mm. Yeah, he's good on Twitter. Ra- yep. Rail Ramblings, isn't it? Yep. On Twitter. Rail, Rail Ramblings, Ramblings yeah. Um, do follow him. Um, I love, Rob, Dean and I giggled, I've interrupted you, but Dean and I giggled when he revealed, and I'm so glad you left it in the show, when he revealed he had also uh, had a fear of heights and the two of you are thick as thieves, yeah, I mean, standing like, ah. He did it, he does it like when we're on the bridge, I'm like, <laughs> was it like now you tell it, like, <laughs> <laughs> now you, like, you should have told us like two weeks ago. Um, here we are now. Thanks, Rob. Um, but, it's quite, but again, Anthony, who actually filmed it, 
it's a small world. So Anthony, who filmed the segment and who's directed the segment, this one, um, uh, again, we had a lot of like, like Phil, for example, directed and filmed a lot of the stuff we did at uh, Series 2. Um, but Anthony uh, actually worked on Great British Railway Journeys, so he's mm. filmed Portillo. So he, he knows the kind, he, he, and again, he's a railway enthusiast to some degree and, and loves his stuff. So Anthony was like, don't like this. <laughs> don't like this. And uh, a bit like we were down in, in uh, Bram Hope Tunnel. Like he, he sort of he lost his sense of humour at a certain point where I think we were kind of like, you know, it's half past four in the morning and I'm like, I think we're done now. I've got everything. And I'm like, it's time we left, guys. Um, <laughs> I, even, like, even I was losing my sense of humour and it's snowing in Bram Hope Tunnel and you've done a day and it's just like, oh. Um, but yeah, Rob, thank you so much. But again, again, seeing the stuff, having a local person saying, I love this. And having access that Network Rail's organised, and the next one is just a quick story as well, which is mm. actually, so we, we showed this briefly uh, yeah, in yeah. episode uh, one of, of series three. Up in the water tower, I found this, and um, it's the signal box. Uh, it's a lever frame, sort of board, backing board, so label effectively for what levers do. And I'm like, where's that from? I'm like, I don't know. It's massive, like twelve foot long. I, like, I don't know what it's doing up here. Um, and it, it, so I, did, I thought it doesn't <laughs> we have to sort this out so thankfully because I've got friends and luckily people across Network Rail and the RHT and NRM the team managed to get in touch with the great uh, the the, uh, the is it great oh, which rail is it it'll be the great northern oh hang on uh, no, northeastern rail no the northeastern the sorry it's the northeastern railway yes northeastern rail society and and they were like, oh yeah we did we did some work and we, we narrowed it down based on the track <laughs> on this the, 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 what what the track would look like where to carry it from and that has now gone to a museum oh locally. wonderful yeah yeah um, and we also we found some more things uh, in there as well which will also go to the museum so uh, I'm quite proud of that it was some finding artifacts that will now have a new audience and that is lovely. It is. That Next was really slide, nice. the, the Newcastle bit, the, the series three was really. I mean, they're all lovely. The, the Newcastle segment was really nice. Oh, here he is. I've I've muted the sound, so you don't have to deal with the sound, everyone. Here's me on repeat. Uh, there you go. So it's I mean, interesting. Look, you say there's multiple takes, which is true, but it's only because they weren't done in succession. Obviously, it was just that every time a train came along, they said ad lib something, and so I was like. <laughs> uh, and so this, this, this. I don't know whether you saw the full clip, but I don't think I said anything before. So it's a good one for train fans. I, I think yeah. it was like I just ad libbed like this random thing. So they're all different. I think it's just me gibbering nonsense every time a tr different train went past. Um, which is what I do, really. Um, <laughs> I suppose the whole time I gibber nonsense every time a train goes past. Um, and that's train spotting life for you, really, isn't it? Um, oh, uh, train spotting life. When during that time, when I was at the uh, side of the uh, the Malik branch, and uh, we go. I'm going live now. It's Tim Dunn at uh, the West uh, the West Highland line. Uh, right, another ear is someone from Didcot in the live centre going, "Oh, Tim, um, you know the, the train's running seven minutes late. Can you fill for seven minutes?" That was my first night of telly presenting. I mean, I've done I've done radio a lot, but yeah. I, was, I had to feel like it was seven, it's, it's seven four, minutes. Seven a seven long minutes. time. I just talked about the love of trains for like seven minutes, which obviously I've done now for an hour and a quarter. Um, but that's basically it's, it's my shtick, really, isn't it? Um, right. And the next right. thing so is So back then, to let's go back here. Yes. So you've had enough of my face, everyone. You'll be glad. It's well, back Ram to Tim again. So at lots of locations. I have tried to record stuff. Again, what, what you don't see is like locations. Like you do a full day of filming, and then of course the team like can you record social stuff as well? Yeah. And she yeah. like okay, try to. Try to so. If I ever, ever do this again, we will plot more time in, if you have a chance to. Um, so if we ever have time, to, if we ever do um, Underground again, I'm sure people watching this will want to know, you're doing Underground, we don't know, uh, we just don't know. Um, but please have to plot time in for doing extra content, bonus content, stuff that you want to put on your social channels. And so I always, I, I always and again, because I think it's very, it's important to... It's important to give people something special and interesting because otherwise just talking crap and repeating stuff. I want to make sure that we have stuff that is new and you can't get anywhere else on social. So um, I've always tried to record things like, you know, saying, tonight on the architecture, the railway's built. Yeah, with the snow blowing in there. <laughs> and is, is that a video? Does that one work as a video? Oh, it should, it should. Oh, yes. Wait. 
it should if I click this button here and then go I'm Tim Dunn and all my life I've never been so cold <laughs> can you hear me I yeah yeah we've got you. the sound you can, you don't get the sound but we got the sound don't worry <laughs> I mean there's another version of that which I haven't included does it involve say, Effie Jeffies it might it, it, I, I've never been to something cold in my life and and, and it, that's the viaduct just behind Bramhope Tunnel which is kind of part of the same thing but we couldn't film there that day because look at the snow i yeah. mean it was i mean that that picture sums up series three to me yeah yeah right on to the last yes. bit oh this next is, week here we go look at this everyone i've included this because i wanted to talk about the love of beckham scott and um i grew up in buckinghamshire I, I lived a very privileged um childhood one that was full of railways and trains and magic that I genuinely um, want to share with people. My, my responsibility is to pass it on now, right? And so I was given education in railways and buildings by my father, who was a, a chartered surveyor uh, for British Railways for some time. But my father was the man that, that negotiated and sold the Kingsway branch uh, to to uh, William McAlpine. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> so, uh, he, we actually met, before we died, we actually met uh, him again. And uh, this chap, so McAlpine said, uh, said um, Bill said, um, I knew you from somewhere. It's my father. <laughs> <laughs> and Dad's like, because we're sitting in, in the carriage, Pine Flying Scotch, and, uh, and Dad sort of goes, um, yes. <laughs> and he goes, where do I know you from? And father says, 1971. <laughs> <laughs> and Bill's like, Dad goes, I sold you the Kingsway branch because that's where it was on that DMU we chartered, British Railway. And we're like, wow, I mean, that's a man that knows his stuff. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so, so but again, I, I, I grew up with the Beckenscott Model Railway. And so, I, I, and so Monday's episode uh, coming up is one that I genuinely hope everyone enjoys because we go back and, and we have stuff about Curzon Street and we have the Roundhouse and we have the, and we have the principal building. And we go across and we look at a, 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 suburb, a suburb building in Europe as well, a brutalist building, which is fascinating. But then we bring it right back to kind of where it all started. So if this is the last ever architect the railway's built, I don't mind because I kind of, I've done the thing I've always wanted to do, which is tell the story of the architecture of Beckenscott. And this is Mary Lou Station under construction in 1929 that's Bert Gray who I actually worked with at Beckenscott he worked at Beckenscott his entire life that man mm. uh, that's him there on, on, on the on the left hand side I worked with Bert when I was a kid and Bert helped build the railway it was a three rail Bassett Luke con con commission and that's him constructing that Mary Lou station which we all know today um, that's him building it and and I suppose carrying the baton on we just tell the story of Beckenscott um, and how it's built as a Bassett Loke creation, as a commission, its, it's biggest ever Gage One creation, mm. and how this railway was created by Mrs. Callingham saying to her husband, uh, Look, my dear, um, either the railway goes outside or you do um, <laughs> to the house, and this whole railway taking over this plot of land next to his house, and then builds them this commissioning, the staffed, his, his cook and his butler and his his housekeeper and his, his his chauffeur to build a model railway and you know, school kids coming in and you know, dumping stuff and helping create lime you know, lime wood carved models of elephants mm -hmm. which we have cast of them still i mean it's just a, a remarkable story the, the world's oldest sort of model village it, it, it taught me how railways work it taught mm -hmm. me about architecture like my father did um and i hope it inspires people too so if you go into the next slide see how that station then changed again there it is in the early years. Look, I mean, there's sort of you know Bassett Loke stock there from 1929. There's a voiding. Like, if you know Beckenscott, if you've been to Beckenscott, you'll see that the signal box is now behind it. We built a, rep a replica of, of Radstock, which is at Didcot now, of course, uh, behind it. It was in signal box with a lever frame in it, which now controls them. Um, I learned how signalling works. And so mm. in, 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 it's quite funny. In Secrets of London Underground, uh, we get Jarley to talk us about block signalling. And actually, Chris talks about block, block signalling. Honestly, I'm obviously I'm asking questions because I kind of know this stuff. I've been doing this age of eleven. You know, I, yeah. I do know how signalling works. It's, it's, it's nice to hear it from a different voice. Um, but there it is in the early years, and of course, it then gets rationalised. Next, next slide. What's the next slide on this one? What have I shown? Uh, look, look, the station evolves over many, many years, and then there's a hut behind it. And look, you look there. There's a model of of a sort of model of the HST. Yeah. Um, you know, Beckenscott yeah. changed over the years. And just to point out that Beckenscott has changed. Um, people think of Beckenscott now as being a, a model village that has always been 1930s. It's not. It changed. When I was a kid, 
there was a high speed train. We had we had we had Deltics. We had forty sevens. I I've, I've got some of those models back at home in Buckinghamshire <laughs> uh, to be restored one day. Um, one day, and we will have them out on the circuit again. There's a class twenty five. I can see there. There's yeah. a class. 31-ish. But again, Beckenscott designed its own tin plate stock. In the years after the Second World War, it built stuff out of rubbish and relics and things. And, and, and so they hammered stuff. And those engines, those things you saw there, covered 6,000 miles, real miles every year. And they still run today, some of those things that you still see today. Yeah. So Beckenscott changed and evolved over time. And what's the next slide? I can't remember. Is, is, is oh, all... that's, that's, in fact, that's, oh, that's, it. that's the last well, one. Let's yeah, just yeah. show that Beckenscott's changed. And I, I, I hope everyone watches the Beckenscott episode. Uh, and and visits Beckenscott because genuinely 15 million people, 15 million people have been there to look at that place over the years. And it has inspired many architects and railway lovers. In fact, there are a number of individuals at Network Rail <laughs> and elsewhere who work on the big railway. And lots of us have gone on. At Beckenscott, we learned our trade. It's yeah. almost like we learn how to do stuff at Beckenscott on this test bed of a, a miniature network we learn how to do this stuff. And we, then we go, we go is, and take it out. It's real. gorgeous. Beckenscott is gorgeous. I went, I, I did a little scouting trip. I didn't do any social media stuff. I kind of went in, ran around and ran out again, just to kind of get an idea of if, of, of. but one of my favorite things you've ever done, Tim, and you know how much I, I hold in high regard, all of you, the things you do, but one of the favorite, one of my favorite things you've ever done was go there when it was evening time and the, and it was getting dark and, and they had all the lights in the houses and all the illuminations. And then, and then you ran a train, you ran a, you put your phone and ran a train run with your phone on the front. It was just that. Honestly, it was just the most relaxing, pleasant, and beautiful little vista, creative little vista. It was marvelous. Uh, we should do I'm that actually, again. <laughs> if if people want me to do it, I, I think you're doing this. I might actually, I, if I have time. I'm taking Monday afternoon off. I'm going to go to Beck and Scott. And I might do it again if I get if I get if you get it working again and I'm ready for the show. I might do it on Monday afternoon. I don't know yet. And if you see it, can you retweet it, everyone? Because I'd like people to know about it. It's on the program. So it's a tour of the railway. Um. Monday afternoon. I'm thinking of doing it. Who knows? Let's see how I get to. Um, people are mentioning uh, in Miniland, uh, model villages. Now, just you know, it's, it's quite funny. I often, I often get people saying, to me, I get emails and like, or, or, or tweets saying, "Hi Tim, um, we should not tweet about Beck in Scotland." Like, like, you should go to X because, mm -hmm. and I'm like, I mean, I have written the book on model. I literally, you I've literally written, written the book on it. Yeah. Um, so I, I do know what, I mean, the, the cupboards behind you are full of archive. Um, my, as my historian, as a hat, came out because I started with model villages and researching model villages. And, and I spent nine years of my life researching the model villages. And I have, I have, I have, yeah, I've been to them all. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> and and I, mean, the, the, I met the, the, the people who built them. I've got, like, my parents, for example, have got my, the spoils of my trips. My parents, as you know this, you didn't get to mention the program. My parents have got in the back garden the bits of the top two thirds of Thorpe Park's Eiffel Tower. Oh, yeah. And the reason they got that <laughs> is because I, I, I Thorpe Park said, they oh, we heard you, you, you collect model bids or your historical model This is years ago. This is what, 15 years ago? 2003. They did this happen. So it's called yes, 15. 15 years. Um, do you want, <laughs> do you want, uh, some models. How big are they? And they said, "Oh, well, she said, oh, because because Nelson's column said, oh, it's about four foot." Like, great, cool, yeah. And then she, she, she rattles. Them. She goes, "Oh, the Eiffel Tower as well." Because oh, and that, that's um, that's like nine foot tall. That's cool, yeah, cool, fine. So we go out to Mod Beck. We go to Thorpe Park and rock up at Thorpe Park uh, to go pick up these things and rock along. I've not seen any pictures of this stuff. I probably should have looked at that beforehand as some research. And um, walked into Thought Park and went, well, fucking fuck is that? It was, and she goes, oh, I didn't mean, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean nine foot, I meant nine metres. <laughs> okay, right. So they got an angle grinder and cherry picker and they cut it apart for me. <laughs> So in my parents' back garden, we've got the top two thirds because the bottom, the bottom third is too big to cut up. But they did then find for me the blueprints from 1972. Show me the blueprints; they're wonderful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we got. Do you remember, I got drunk. We, we, you know, I got. Oh, it was post Rail Awards. Do you remember? Yes. And, and we're like half past three in the morning. I'm like, gin, and and we, I'm like, oh, this is great. You gave me gin, and we rolled out blueprints and looked at these blueprints. It was that was quite good actually. I enjoyed that. 
it was lots of fun. So yeah, and, and so I've got, there's been enough on our wall up in the city room. Um, but yeah, so again, um, I have got the spoils of many miniature parks and things. I've got the archives, a lot of them, that, uh, and it, it's on me to, to get those restored actually over the years. So um, I have miniature architecture at home. Um, what is it? The model of village hot fuzz, brilliant. It's perfect. Uh, so, so yes, a miniature, also, so miniature Wonderland. So, so a couple of things here. One, uh, Miniland. Um, the man behind it is an old friend of mine. He was the um, <laughs> Guy Bagley uh, is the chief, or was the chief metal maker at, at Legoland for a while. So he was a good friend of mine. Lived in the village I grew up in, and Guy and his team came to Beck and Scott. We took them around, and they kind of learned a lot about uh, designing in, in, in the theatre of, of model making and railways and construction from Beck and Scott. So yes, uh, it, so Miniland Windsor has its roots, obviously Miniland uh, Billund. Uh, in Denmark, but also has a lot of its uh, scope from Beck and Scott itself. Um, Minter Wonderland, yeah, obviously, yeah, I've been there. Oh, and a stag do. That was a great, not my stag do. It, was, no, no, it, was, it wasn't a stag do, it was the stag anniversary. My friend George. Uh-huh. And George occasionally like, watches this as well. Uh, <clears throat> George, uh, who, yeah, who's got a, who has a family that are very well rail connected over the years, uh, you know. Um, and and so George, for his stag anniversary, he goes somewhere every year. He has a pass, takes some friends every year. Um, I can't go this year, but uh, the year before last, we went off to, to Hamburg. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think we did, uh, what, five and a half hours? Went to Hamburg? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, to be fair, that's quite a five reasonably and a half short hours. Yeah, yeah. I mean, just... personal best. Um, pretty good. Uh, had good fun. Uh yeah, I do, yes, Midland. Yes, um, Midland is very nerdy uh, because, like Beck and Scott, they care, and there are staff mm-hmm. there that have gone. What would that train be? And they ask the right question. They go, "Let's build that one," and and it's like, I like that. I mean, the stuff I've seen at Midland, the secret is Midland. There are there are secret Midland. There's lots of things there you can't see as the public. There are hidden scenes that only. The staff know so a lot of the buildings like pendant for example pendant miniature village oh it's kind of the, the 170 oh scale is that kind of it is the scale landscape of the veil of white horse of a summer in 1935 or J- july summer day or june summer day or sunday afternoon when they do the right time table for it and everything amazing all the buildings at pendant have got interiors no one's ever going to see them they've got interiors so some of the staff at legoland have built interiors some of their buildings or certain rooms and there are certain very naughty things <laughs> Uh, for example, and if it's still there, the old cluster that used to be, the, they call the clusters, the old London cluster, uh, there's a Soho, it's like, it's like naughty things, that, it's, 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 that is very funny, because the staff put it in, because no one can see it, it's like, it's brilliant. Um, <clears throat> so oh, there we go. Um, everyone's sending, everyone will come, send your questions now that you haven't answered, and we'll pick up a few at the end, but we will do the outro before we before that, to give Tim a chance to catch his breath. It's been one cool. Tim, thank you so much. We will flip back, we'll, we'll be back to Tim momentarily, in just five seconds, but what we'll do is say, I will say, um, thanks to all those listening in audio only form, uh, work is still getting in the way of me catching up with the podcasts, but um, hopefully next week I'll have time to actually upload all the downloads we'll get there i've changed the system blah blah blah. don't worry about that uh next thing uh the the standard plugs except there's a new tile so patreon patreon.com slash gareth dennis to support these and make them happen and then as summer arrives um and spring arrives we might do more on location rail matters which would be fun you do a rail matter of of me and tim in the pub talking about uh, just an hour of us in the york tap um (laughs) paypal.me slash It'll be fun, right? Um, Hashtag content. Uh, PayPal.me slash Gareth Dennis for loose change and nice comments. Uh, the Discord server, garethdennis.co.uk slash Discord. Um, the chat happens, but it, but 24-7, it's relentless. The new thing um, is that there is merchandise, which is bonkers. You can get... What? Yes, I know. Look at this. Look at this. Well, I'm going to go I'm gonna go large. my large face. Look at this, Tim. It is a rail natter mask. Uh, look at this. It's a rail natter mask crazy right um and there's a mug there are, there's a mug which says is this mug a gadget ban um people have already been making new requests for merch so uh if you want the merch particularly if you're a patron person you get a discount masket.co.uk slash collection slash rail natter you can find it on the masket website how silly is that tim there's merchandise for real natter utterly bizarre i mean <clears throat> who would make their own 
bits of merchandise and make their own mask because that'd be weird, wouldn't it? It would be I weird, mean, but thankfully, Maskettes are fa- fans of the show and they said, Oh, do you want some merchandise? We quite like the oh, show, we nice. like to do that. And they reached out and they said, We love the show. We Thanks for plugging our masks that we do because I've got my British Railways regional railways one that I wear. Uh, and they said, We'll do you some merchandise, which is absolutely lovely of them. So, uh, yes. Um, I've got a little video treat for everyone to watch. Oh. Let's rediscover the railway. This is nice, Tim. Rediscover like the magic of the open air. Breathtaking peaks and outstanding natural beauty. Iconic history and world famous sights. Sea breezes and sunny skies. Country life. Late nights and city culture. Come with us on your railway. It's great to have you back. It's such a nice little video. I uh, I I um I emailed Jen. Hi Jen. And uh, and asked for the HD version uh, so that I could put it into Rail Natter uh, because it's so lovely. Uh, So I thought I'd put that in because it's quite nice. Uh, Yeah. Um, So there you go. It's Britain's Railways. It's it's Network Rail saying, look, come back, everyone. Come back and remember why the railways are brilliant and all the places you can go. It's very nice. I like it. And uh, and it features you, of course. It it does, and it features me because because Jen since you know, I've got to know the content team over a little while, um, and they're they're so lovely. Oh look at that! I'm wearing a oh yeah, See, look. who's what's this? Look. What's this on your face? It looks like it's an underground mask. I mean, <laughs> it's yours, your, your, yours is a masket one. Is it a masket one as well? No, no. I I use another. <clears throat> what are they called? Not contrado. I can't remember what they're called. Uh, bags of love or something. It sounds. A bit Oh yeah, you sent um, me the link to it. That's right. I remember I asked you ages ago about that. Yeah, uh, but yeah. So, the, but uh, because I took photographs of all the maquette, I was like, I just print them out. And honestly, the looks you get if you wear that on the tube, the tourists think it's hilarious. Um, <laughs> yes. uh, so, so anyway, um, sorry, yeah, I got so, distracted. So, 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 uh, go on. The reason I did that video and voiceover is because I, I I got to meet the content team over the past year or so, and they've been very supportive of. of uh, the artist program and and the reason i don't so much work with them is because i discovered very quickly that the content team um is is genuinely thoughtful and they love our railway um at its heart there are some railway enthusiasts who um, for, for them work they, they come to netrail because they love the railway mm. and so when you see tweets or you see facebook messages from any of that team or videos it comes from the heart it genuinely does these people love it so I, I, you know, I, I get so angry when I see people just niggling away at the tweet. And I'm like, these people are doing the very best they can. And it angers me when I, I see the, the, some of the, the, the stuff that's going on. Because they, they care so very much. And so I said, I'll do that. Because I sent that video with Jen as a voiceover. She goes, I said, oh, I love this. It's so beautiful. She said, do you want to do it? I'm like, oh, of course I will. I went to Milton Keynes and uh, give voice it over. Uh, just because I thought I'd go and do it. And um, a privilege to do it. Um, and I hope, and so I think someone asked a little bit further up. Uh, someone said, "Oh, someone said on the questions. Hang on a second. Uh, I never real. Uh, I'm, I'm, yeah, it, it's nice stuff with real because, and the, the stuff we do is value added content is is genuinely lovely because here's a chance to just talk about something with a heritage aspect. We go, that's the past, but what's now? What's the future? What's the context? And that's exciting." You know, because I sitting as a historian hat on versus my world of future rail travel, like as travellers, to bridging that gap is fascinating and wonderful. And to find people that love it and do it is a privilege. It is. So, um, so uh, right before we merch, oh, go on, merch. no, I can't do that. But oh, it's Beck and Scott again. It's Beck and Scott. Well, it's because I'm giving the, the plug for the the last in this uh, in this series, the last the last episode of series three, the thirtieth episode of, of uh, the architecture of the railways built. I found a nice high resolution picture of Beck and Scott looking in all its glory with some very happy people here in the railway looking marvelous, and it just looks spiffing. So uh, that that shall feature amongst other things, Curzon Street as well, um, um, it, on Monday night at eight pm on Yesterday t- TV. It is. It is. It'll come about on Monday afternoon. It's a, it's a question's been asked. Favorite railway clock anywhere? Um, 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 are the NSE ones at, at Charing Cross because they're just fabulous. They oh, fabulous. so the Narrow Rail thread just explains delays. Richard, yeah, that's Chris. A lot of those are from Chris Denham, mm. a friend of ours, uh, who let me in to 
London Bridge Signal Box, which is just up the road, just up there. Um, and he let me um, he let me go into it uh, late at night, and we, we launched Series Three from the inside of the signal box. I mean, yeah. like, I'm the, yeah, it was good. I enjoyed it. I'm, I'm very I'm a very lucky man, and I I, I, I always say that um, I, I I yeah I. I don't take this stuff lightly. It's a responsibility. I'm very lucky. It isn't about me. Um, the television company likes it because it's about Tim being, it's, it's my journey. But it, it, in my head, it's taking you lot with me. So I've always got everybody behind me and going, we want you to live this thing. So I, it, it's, it, it's, it's quite, it's a hard work, but it is, I don't, I don't because it's fun. It, uh, you know, it doesn't pay the, Big bucks that people think the television does. It, it doesn't, really doesn't. What pays the big bucks are things like going doing big afternoon talks. Yeah, I was going to say, that's the money, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. That hasn't happened. The stuff that you don't have time to do because um, you have a day job. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, 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 I just think you need to... Oh, Chris Denham is, is Kentish Hack on Twitter, if you want to follow him. Again, a very honest man. A man who loves the railway. Mm. One, one of Network Rail's great advocates, great champions. Um, Absolutely. And please, you know, if you, it, just... Do retweet them real stuff, you know, because they 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 are just brilliant. Yeah, the um, team are great. Oh, go on. I expect some more good stuff from them over a little while. I hope to get to work with them again. Um, oh, people ask me at the masks. You can't, I'm afraid, because I can't be available because these are my pictures that I do. But it's it's kind of you know, I'd rather you support. Go, go and buy LT Museum masks rather than mine. Go and buy their version rather than mine because it, it generates money for their museum. It, Definitely needs some money. Um, this is a joke. Please go and buy the LT Museum. Yeah, I was going to say, the LT um, have all the different the money. Yeah. yeah. They've got them all there. Right, so last yeah, one. Yeah, the... that was licensed stuff. So go and buy it from there. Yeah, exactly. So that, that's it, really. Um, yeah. Um, the very last thing for me is two plugs. Much. Oh, go on. I, so, I don't know, Tim, we'll come back to you momentarily. I'm just going to do my last two plugs to say what's happening next week. Um, actually, before I do that, tomorrow night, I'm in London uh, because I'm at, I'm talking, I'm giving, a t- I'm delivering a talk at the Model Railway Club um in london which is very a, 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 a bit of a privilege so very exciting so i'm delivering a talk uh, i'm delivering a talk called the do's don'ts disasters and delights of permanent way design uh i'm gonna te- basically it's an excuse i'm shoehorning in a two-hour lecture on um track design uh none of them know that yet but uh yeah so if you want to come along uh you can come along i think there are limited tickets available uh but you can also watch it on zoom but if you cut, watch it on zoom you don't get the beer that is at the uh, the actual venue so uh Come along and watch if you like. Meet me and say hi in London. Uh, and then next week, next week's uh, Rail Natter is the two-episode delayed Good and Bad Ways to Stop Errant Trains episode where we're going to talk about buffer stops. Uh, so that should be interesting. There we are. Uh, do you recognise that train, Tim? It's, there's something gone wrong with it. It's, uh, it's decided to not... It, it, it's, it's got a bit excited. It doesn't very here. well. No, no. It doesn't um, really I'm, I'm, well. You'll notice I don't actually ever comment on rail disasters or rail accidents for, for, for various uh, personal reasons. Um, and so but I, I, I generally stay out of them. But that one is an interesting one that happened recently. But I, 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 I don't... I don't well, this one, the reason, so this was originally going to be done two weeks ago, but for obvious Salisbury reasons, it didn't feel right to kind of dwell on a rail incident like this. So I've pushed it back by two weeks. Oh, and yeah. The good thing about this is that no one was hurt and we can therefore, you know, it can be a bit of a light heart discussion about what, some of the important things that make railways work and make everyone, you know, make them the most safe way to travel on land. Um, and my God, I've, I've, I've created enough crashes at Beckenscott to, uh, to, <laughs> yes. to, to learn me. I was going to say, you that. understand in, in, in incredible detail all of the ways in which you can derail a gauge one train. <laughs> Including massive feet, turns out. <laughs> um, yeah, um, Yes, yeah, so, uh, um, I, I can't join tomorrow night because I, I'm actually writing a script tomorrow night for a thing I'm filming on Friday, bizarrely, for something else that's going to happen the following week that I can't talk about yet that will be out and about if I make, but, uh, quite good quite good fun stuff that will be out on the internet. Um, so I can't join you, I'm afraid. But also, the Model Rebel Club, the MRC, like a keen house, just lovely. You can have a lovely... You, you have, I, I've done two talks there. Um, a lovely, lovely bunch of people. Mm. Lovely bunch of people. Tim, thank you so much. We've we've got lots of people being very happy. Lots of people have loved that episode. Um, everyone is being very pleased. Um, uh, Tim, thank you so much for joining. You're, you, I know you. We've both had a really very busy day, um, and you have an unbelievably busy schedule. Nine to like not nine to five, like seven till ten. Um, but thank you so much for making time to join us. You know, we always love having a chat, and I, I, uh, it's always nice to have an evening with you. So, um, thank you so much for joining us. 
It's a pleasure. Thank you for spending the night with me, all of you. I've I've <laughs> I enjoyed that immensely. Um, yes, thank you. Uh, uh, thank you for your time. Uh, and we do all this stuff because it's a privilege. And uh, so we don't hold it lightly. Indeed not. Tim, uh, everyone, thanks for watching. Tim, thank you so much for your time. And we shall bid you all a, a good night and a farewell. Uh, cheerio, everyone. Cheerio. Cheerio.